the presentations you learn something new even in basic presentations but the hallway track is just indispensable Hey everybody, so I'm Glenn Filan. I take classes at Georgia Tech and I work for Invisible AI. Uh, we are a computer vision company that builds self-driving car technology for factories. So our problem is we have to get all of this data from all these different cameras together to simulate offline. We wanna test improvements to our applications and to do this, we have to make this run really fast so that the developers, me and my team, can have a good time instead of sitting around waiting for things to run. So this is a nice blurry photo of what that looks like. So this is a view from six different cameras that might be in a factory, and we have a big point cloud and we're looking at people and objects. And we have all of this data coming in constantly. So what's a data loader? Data loader is a class that loads data from the disk into a useful representation. In our case, it's video, video-like data, pose, object detections, and this data loader will let us run our offline simulations. So there's two separate problems here. The first is loading that data efficiently, and the second is doing that concurrently. So the solution to loading your data efficiently is to organize it. And so for us, a five-minute data set might be 20,000 files, 10 gigabytes, and we give each of these a timestamp a file type, so we're able to organize all of our data. It's already sorted, right? So no in login sort, we just pull it in. The next thing is how do you do it concurrently? So if you're loading data serially, you'll load your data set and then you'll simulate your system. And what happens is you crash because you're out of memory. And even if you didn't crash, you've used a lot of time. What you wanna do is do it concurrently. You load your data set while you're simulating your system. So here you consume the data as soon as it's loaded. You free memory when the associated data has been consumed and you don't have any out of memory. What's the design? So there's three levels to the design. There's the overall data loader, there's the node loader, which represents the intermediate parts of the system. In our case, it's the camera. Could be an edge server, could be an exchange connection, whatever it is in your case. And then at the bottom is the data reader. So the data reader is what's actually doing the concurrent loading. So this represents a stream of data from pose or video or object detection at that camera. You'll need to implement the loading thread yourself, um, but let's get into it. So here's a tree view. Again, you see the data readers. They're feeding data to the node loaders over a lockless queue. And then we have the node loader going up to the data loader. So you'll uh, ask, for the, hey, give me the next frame. And the data loader will go and pull off all of those queues, the next frame of information for all of your different data types. So the data loader, again, get next frame, and you have your node loader, it's pretty simple. On the node loader, again, you have get next frame for each of your readers, and you also have member variables for each of your readers. And then the last part here is the data reader design. You have the get next frame, you have your lockless queue, and you have a loading thread. So the loading th thread is what's actually pulling data out of the files, and shoving a reference to it, or a pointer to it, into that queue, and the capacity that you set for that queue limits how much data you're loading at any given time. So you do that, you have some conditional variables, and that's how you synchronize all of this. So the results, replacing our old data loader reduced load times from 87% of our run to around 1.5% of our total run time. That's a 60 time speed up, and it's a 10x program speed up. So that means we can put our simulations into the CI. It improved all of our developer time, you know, our experience, right? What used to take a day, we could do in 40 minutes. And because of the reduced memory overhead, we can run multiple simulations concurrently. Uh, so thank you, that's my talk. I hope some of you found it interesting. And just send me your feedback or uh, any thoughts you have. Thank you, Paul.